like I said, we are going to be looking at the policy yes, mix part of the of the learning unit four. Um, but what is really important or the building blocks of of this part of the of the unit is really understanding um, the goods market and the ISM model. So how you derive the IS curve and also understanding the financial market and the LM model. So I had hoped that I would recap on those concepts a bit, but given time, and I think you have covered this before, I won't really get into that. So maybe just to, to talk about um, the building blocks and also to understand if you guys understand the ISLM model. Uh, can you guys see my slide, by the way? I forgot to ask. Yes. Perfect. Um, so I'm on the I'm on slide four, and I just wanted to get an idea of if you guys still understand or at least understand what the ISLM model is, what it looks like, what the equilibrium of that model looks like, and what kind of variables, endogenous or exogenous, kind of shift the curves or bring about a movement along the curves. Um, and this really is a recap of some of the examples on um, fiscal and monetary expansionary policies on page 147 of your study guide. So we can go there. Um, and then if one of you can please shout perhaps as to how they understand the a ISLM model, what shifts the IS curve, what shifts the LM curve, and which variables are endogenous, because that's really the building block of understanding the policy mix section. Okay, so it's a it's a, it's a big class, 22 participants. Um, it would be nice if you guys really participate, raise your hands. I'm I'm really keen for this to be a dialogue and not necessarily myself reiterating what is in the study guide. So I'd like to understand where you are missing the concept, if at all, and perhaps also explain to you some of the techniques of understanding which variable is endogenous, which variable is exogenous. But if you guys don't come up with solutions or answer me, then I'm not sure how we can proceed, except for me to just speak and reiterate um reiterate what's in the study guide so i'd really appreciate if you could you could come through and and respond when i'm asking the questions i'm not sure if the other sessions have been interactive or if they've been lecture like but i prefer my sections to be a dialogue and have you speak to me and me respond to some of your questions anybody would you mind Lefense, you can go ahead. Lefense, you are on mute. Okay, I'm not sure if you are on mute or if you've gone silent, but just to move right along from this slide, I think the point that I was trying to make was that you need to be cognizant of what variable is endogenous in this model. And as you will see, the variable that's endogenous is the outcome or income variable, which is on your X um, axis. And what we really mean by that is that that variable is determined within the model. So it's the shifting um, or the movements along the curves which are brought by a change in other variables, which we call exogenous, which can be either um, an increase in government spending or a reduction in taxes or all of the other variables that you've learned about um, as you tried to understand factors that influence the, the demand of the economy. So with that in mind, um, you then obviously have the two policies that you need to be um, cognizant about, and this is the fiscal policy and the monetary policy. And for each of these, you really need to understand which policy affects which curve. And then you also need to understand which variables um, within each policy affects which curve. 
Um, so I'm hoping you, you understand that. That's not the purpose of this section, but I was hoping that we would have an interactive session and we would then build it from there. So I'll move on to um, what we meant to discuss today, which is really the policy mix. So this is you understanding that we can use um, a combination of policies, be it fiscal policy or monetary policies to achieve a certain objective. So the objectives can, um, can be either a reduction in the budget deficit, the objective can be a reduction in unemployment, the, re the, the objective can be an increase in out output or income, um, given a status quo of the economy, say a recession. So the question um, that, just need to make sure there's nothing on the chat, on the chat function. Okay, there we go. Okay, um, is there time? Okay, so I will answer that. Can we have a presentation mode? Um, we can, let's see if that works. Is that better? Okay, um, unfortunately, if I have this in presentation mode, then I won't be able to see the team's um, the team the team screen. So should I just increase the font? Maybe is that helpful? Widumelo, you asked for a presentation mode. Is an increase in the font useful? Okay, I'm going to assume that an increase in the font is is helpful because once I have it on presentation mode, then I lose my my team screen um, and I'd like to see the hands and the chat. Okay, um, and Thea responded on your assignments. Thank you for your feedback and his assessment to timed. Okay, so any questions relating to any admin or any issues on assessments, please put those on the discussion forum and we will respond to those as and when they arise. So just getting back to the topic of the day, which is the policy mix in the ISLM model, I was still explaining that this is the use of both the fiscal and the monetary policy um, in the ISLM model to achieve a certain objective. So how a question in this section will be framed is that you will get what the objective is, right? So if the objective is to reduce the budget deficit, then the question will state, that if we want to reduce the budget deficit of country X, what policies would you use? Or if it's a multiple choice question, um, it will then give you ideas of the policy and you just need to know which policy affects which curve. And, and I would advise that you always draw, um, you draw the curves in order for you to understand. And you'll see as we go to the revision questions um, on how that works. So that's really the introduction of what policy mix is. And there's an example, um, I'm not sure on what page now of the study guide, but the example is, is about um, a reduction in the budget deficit, right? So the, the, the question there was use a, a mix of policies in the ISLM model to reduce a, a budget deficit. So what is important here is one, you need to understand the terminology. So when we speak of a budget deficit, what is that? That's the first thing you need to understand. The second thing you need to understand is what um, variable changes, right? So, and in what direction? So if it's a change in government spending, what direction should it change to? So is this an increase in government spending or an increase in taxes? or a decrease in government spending or a decrease in taxes. The second thing that you also need to understand is to understand what the implication of the change in variable means. So if it's a decrease in government spending, um, the question then becomes, is that a contractionary fiscal policy? Is that an expansionary fiscal policy? Is that a contractionary monetary policy? Or is it, uh, 
uh, an expansionary monetary policy. And once you've been able to determine which policy it is, you will then know which curve moves, right? Um, and then depending on the direction of the variable, you will also know um, which direction the which direction the curve moves to. So in this particular example, and obviously this will be question specific, in this particular example, we are requested to reduce the budget deficit. Now the budget deficit is, is a situation where government spending is greater than the tax collected by the government. So they are spending more than the revenue that they earn. So the question is, how do you reduce that? So there are two things you could do. You could, for example, um, reduce the government spending because you're spending more than the revenue that you earn, or you could increase the taxes, which means you are now increasing the revenue that government gets. Now, either one of those, so a decline in, in G or an increase in T, that affects demand, right? We know that affects demand, and we know that um, in the goods market, that then affects the IS curve. So if it affects the IS curve, the question that we should be asking ourselves is what happens to the IS curve, right? So we know that um, a contractionary fiscal policy reduces demand, so if it reduces demand, what that means is you will have lesser income or lesser output because people are demanding less. So people plus firms plus government are demanding less, which means your, your, your income there would be less. So how you should think about this is the shift of the IS curve. So you know GOT affects demand and therefore this affects the goods market and the goods market is used to derive the IS curve. So the curve that will shift between the two will be the IS curve. Now, the question that you should be asking yourself is, which direction is it going to change? Is it changing leftwards? Is it changing um, to the right? Or is it changing what we call along the curve? So is this a change along the curve? So um, a contractionary fiscal policy will reduce demand or output, and we know that. So the policy that would need to be implemented would be a contractionary fiscal policy, which means our output must contract. Contract means reduce. So if our output should reduce, it means our IS curve should shift to the left. So you then see um, a shifting of the IS curve from IS zero or IS just IS um, to IS one. So this leaves us um, from the equilibrium level A and it takes us to the new equilibrium level A1. So that is that is how the first policy, which is the fiscal policy, um, would, that's what the policy would do. It will literally reduce um, outcome because it's contractionary and it's the IS curve that would shift to the left. Now, the example had asked us um, to reduce government deficit, I mean, the budget deficit, but keeping output the same. So then the question that you should ask yourself is, if I'm at equilibrium A1, how do I achieve the same output as equilibrium A? Right. So the, the question is, how on the new IS curve would I achieve higher income or higher output? And the answer is through um, an expansionary monetary policy. So we know that from the financial market, um, it's, it's the change in interest rates, right, that affect um, that money, that demand, that money demand curve, which then is used to derive um, the LM curve. And in fact, with you guys, you're now using this new concept, which is the Reserve Bank sets a predetermined interest rate. So at this new interest rate, how, how would I achieve 
higher income or the same income using an alternative policy. So if you are at A1, which has a corresponding Y1, what would government need to do to get us to Y2 or the original Y? Because that's what the question asks us. It asks us to reduce the budget deficit, but maintain the output level. So what you would, what the government would have to do is that it would need to decrease the interest rates. Now, decreasing the interest rates resembles an expansionary monetary policy, um, and that would shift the LM curve from LM to LM1. What does that do? We know that our new IS curve, IS1, will then intersect our new LM curve at A2. And at equilibrium A2, we then have higher income levels. And these income levels have been achieved through a contractionary fiscal policy, which is what we were asked to do, reduce the budget deficit. But when reducing the budget deficit, also make sure that your income remains the same. And that is achieved through an expansionary policy. Um, we need to know how to explain the chain of events. So why does an increase, I mean, why does a decrease in interest rate here um, increase Y, right? So this is the explanation that um, we learned in previous learning units, which is the change in interest rates. What does it do? It affects um, how firms behave. So if interest rates are less, firms will, do they invest more or invest less? They invest more because the cost of capital is less. And when they do that, um, demand is expanded. And that's why a reduction in interest rates would result in an increase in demand and an increase in output. Are we clear with that example? Can I go to the questions? Do you guys have any questions on, on how this works? Um, Sia Bonga. Oh, I was saying it's clear on my side. Oh, it's clear on your side. Great. Okay. So we then move. Um, there was another example on. So you had two examples in your study guide, and I just thought I should go through both of them. So the other example was the objective um, of this was to increase. Um, the level of output. So we are told that in this country, country X, the economy is in a recession. Um, and because this economy is in a recession, what should government do? What policy mix should government implement in order to achieve an increase in Y? So the same thought process applies, right? You need to ask yourself, what's the right policy mix? So is this an expansionary fiscal policy or is it an expansionary monetary policy? Is it a contractionary fiscal policy or an expansionary fiscal policy? Once you've determined that, you must then determine which variable um, is changing in order for you to explain the chain of events. So in this example, um, I have chosen that if, if, if an economy is in a recession, what we want to see is we want to see an increase in outcome or output or income. So an increase in income really means we need to increase the demand, right? So if we are increasing the demand, um, which policy increases demand? We know that if you change, um, say you, you increase government spending, we know that demand increases. We also know that if you reduce taxes, um, then people have a higher disposable income and therefore they will spend more. So the demand will increase. We also know that if interest rate changes, so if there's a reduction in interest rates, um, firms will invest more because the cost of capital is cheaper and people as well. I mean, when interest rates are low, um, uh, people's disposable income is higher because um, the cost of debt and all of that is lower. 
So you then ask yourself, which policy should I use to increase that? So the three variables that I just mentioned, all of those increase demand. So it means you are using if an expansionary fiscal policy in conjunction with an expansionary monetary policy. Then what remains is for you to be able to explain why the variables change um, income. So if we implement an expansionary fiscal policy, which direction, what curve is affected? That's the first question. We know that fiscal policy affects IS curve, right? So if it's expansionary, it means it must increase demand. If it increases demand or increases output, it means it must shift to the right because we want an increase in, um, in income. So your IS curve will shift from IS1, I mean from IS, um, this should be IS0, but from IS to IS1. So your equilibrium level um, moves from A to B, right? Um, but the question had asked for, for an increase in Y and it had asked for a policy mix. So every time you are asked for a policy mix, um, we are asking you to implement two policies. So you can't stop at B and say the increase, um, the new equilibrium increases Y, because that would have been somewhere in between Y and Y1. So you should always, um, on a question on policy mix, implement two policies, right? So if you were to implement another policy that would increase demand, what policy would that be? That would be um, your monetary policy. So an expansionary monetary policy means that government has uh, predetermined a lower interest rate. So I moves from I to I1. At this new LM curve, LM1, um, and IS1, we have achieved even higher um, income. And that's really what the question was asking for there. So I think, I hope you, you have learned at least the technique of how to go about answering the question. The first thing you ask yourself is which, um, what is the objective? You need to understand what the objective that the question is asking for. Once you understand the objective, you ask yourself which variable changes to achieve the objective. Then you ask yourself which policy um, is affected by the variable that you chose. Then you ask yourself whether it's the expansion of that policy or the contraction of that policy. Then you ask yourself which curve is affected. Is it the LM curve or the IS curve? And then you ask yourself which direction does the curve change? I mean, shift to. Is it to the left or is it to the right? In the case of LM, is it upwards or downwards? So that is really the technique of answering the policy mix questions. So let's go to the revision questions. We have 20 minutes and I'm happy to, to, to make the class go uh, beyond eight if you guys are agreeable to that because we started uh, 15 minutes late. But let's see how, how we, we, we do through, through the questions. So in learning unit um, four, there are a number of questions there. So I just went there and I picked questions that were relevant to policy mix um, because I assumed that you would have covered the other ones um, in other sessions or even in the, in the discussion forums. So question 24 um, was a question on policy mix, at least 24, 25, 26. So I want us to cover those questions and this is where i'm also going to ask that we 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 engage and it be more interactive than what it has been so question 24 it asks for you are dealing with a budget deficit that is occurring in this country what is this balali um so the question asks what a budget deficit means can can someone shout the answer, Sia? 
Is it okay for me to call you Sia? Yeah, it's okay. All right. So what, what is the meaning of budget deficit? Um, so it means uh, taxes are higher than, uh, uh, sorry, the government is spending more than the taxes. Okay. So, so taxes are taxes less. Are so it's two. So the answer is two. That is correct. So a budget deficit, just like I explained, it just means that the revenue that is being collected is less than what government is spending, right? So taxes are less than government spending. So the correct answer there is two. So on question 25, um, it asks a budget deficit reduction can be achieved through what? So we know that um, government is spending more than it is collecting how how do we reduce that how do you change that what policy should we use or which variable should we use so the question has options on the policy and it also has um it also has options on the variable that you should use so how do we how do we reduce a budget deficit? Okay, would a contractionary fiscal policy reduce a budget deficit? Okay. Um, would okay. Let's let's. So so this kind of questions is always useful to to also go through a process of elimination. I mean, if you don't know the exact answer, you start with one, you eliminate until you get to the right answer, right? So let's go to the obvious uh, wrongs, right? So we're talking about a budget deficit. So we know that the variables that um, are affected there are government spending or tax because we've just got the definition from SIA that G is greater than T, right? So we know at least that C is wrong, right? So whoever picks C, they are getting that wrong because the, the variables that we're interested in is um, um, government spending or taxes. Um, I would also have eliminated A and B simply because we know that in order to reduce a budget deficit, we need to start at a variable. So you don't start at a policy. Remember what I said, you start at the objective, you ask yourself how it affects why, you then or demand, and then you get to the variable. Then you ask yourself the policy. So I would have eliminated A and B. So really the, the crux of this question is, um, in order to reduce the budget deficit, do you increase government spending or do you increase tax? What is the correct answer? We increase taxes. We increase taxes. Thank you, Sia. And you, you simply can't increase government spending because if you increase government spending, that difference is, 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 is bigger, right? So you are actually increasing the budget deficit if you increase government spending. So the correct answer here is E. We should be increasing um, Texas. If there was an option to reduce government spending, that would have also been a correct answer. But from what we are given, the correct answer is E. So I hope you are getting an idea of how to navigate through, through these questions. And, 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 and the trick really is understanding which variable, um, which variable is, is being asked about and therefore which policy and what is the impact on demand, which is then reflected through the ISLM curve. So question 26, um, in the ISLM model, a budget deficit reduction can be illustrated by, mm, and the level of output and income. Mm. Okay, so we've answered in 25 that the budget reduction is through an increase in tax, right? And, and at least this one is right in front of you. So anybody can, can shout 
if if you can understand the graph that I put there, because I just put the answer right there. So what will an increase? So, so taking from 25, what would an increase in taxes do? We know that an increase in taxes um, reduces our disposable income, right? Because now SARS is taking much more than it should. Um, so then I don't have that much to spend. And what that does is it reduces our consumption levels and therefore it reduces our aggregate demand and therefore it reduces what is produced in the economy, which is why or output or income, depending on what you prefer. Um, so the question is then asking us um, what, how is it illustrated? So this is now where you understand which policy is affected by the change in the variable that you chose and to what direction um, is the curve shifting left or right. So in this case, we have said there's an increase in taxes. So we know that an increase in tax, does it affect the IS curve or the LM curve? Uh, number one. IS curve. It affects the IS curve. IS curve, number one. Okay, so you saying it affects the IS curve. So it means two is, no, no, it means the LM curve is not an option. So three and four are out, right? So we need to be choosing between one and two. And thank you so much for those that are responding. Um, so the question is, does it go to the left or does it go to the right? And I think we have had the answer, which is because there's a reduction in Y, it means that the IS curve should have sh shifted to the left. And when it shifts to the left, it reduces income and output. So the answer there is one. Are we good? Do, are we understanding how we are getting to the leftward shift of the IS curve and the reduction in income? Yes, great. So then we move to the next question. And the next question was question 27. And question 27 is saying um, to counteract the impact on the level of outcome. So remember in question 26, we've concluded that the income level will reduce, right? Um, country Balali can implement X policy that involves um, in the interest rate. So this is where the policy mix now uh, applies. So we've implemented a contractionary fiscal policy that is a reduction um, I mean, an increase in tax that has shifted the IS curve to the left. Now, how do we counteract that? And counteract that is the same as what we discussed in the example. How do you maintain the level of um, income through another policy? So the question is literally asking you, how do you increase um, the level of income back to where it was before? So the trick here really is if you've used a fiscal policy before, the question is now asking for the alternate or the alternative policy. So you know that one, the fiscal policy is not a, an appropriate answer. So one and three are out. I mean, we've already implemented them in question 26. So our real options are between two and four. So now the question is, in order to increase income, which monetary policy do you use? Do you use an expansionary monetary policy or do you use a contractionary monetary policy? We want to increase demand. Expansionary. expansionary. We should expand. So every time we speak of increasing output, we are expanding. Expanding simply means the variable that is being discussed will have an effect of increasing output in the economy or income in the economy. So the answer to this one is number three. Um, is it number three? No. So we reduce uh, LM uh, and what is the, the change in interest rates? Decrease. It decreases. 
So the answer is number four. The answer is number four. Yeah. So we're looking for an expansionary monetary policy and a decrease in interest rate. This one was easy because once you got the expansionary monetary policy, um, you had gotten it. There was no trick about whether uh, there was an increase or decrease in interest rates. Okay. Um, just four more questions to go. Um, so in the next question, question 28 to 30 are based on the following information of country Ananda, where the economic growth in the economy decreases for two consecutive or two cons, I think that should be consecutive periods. So we, we know the definition of a recession, right? A definition of a recession is what is there, which is economic growth is negative for two consecutive periods. So this country is in a recession. And the question is, um, well, to avoid the recession, it does sound that it does sound like it's already in a recession, but it's framed to say to avoid the recession. Um, in this scenario, both physical and monetary policies must be used simultaneously. So this is a policy mix question. This requires X physical policy and X policy. So this one sounds like what we've just discussed now. What is the correct answer for this? So the question is, in order to avoid a recession, which means we want to increase and um, the level of income, what two policies should be used? Do we use a contractionary fiscal policy? No. Do we use a contractionary monetary policy? No. Okay. Um, that means the correct answer is three. Yes. Right. So both the fiscal policy and the monetary policy should have an expansion uh, objective, or it must increase the levels of income. Then question 29, in terms of the ISLM model, the IS curve shifts to the M and the LM curve shifts to the M to avoid a recession. So if following from question 28, if we have an expansionary fiscal policy, which direction does the IS curve shift to? Is it to the right or to the left? And to the right. right. To the right. Thank you, Nadia. So, which then means um, one and two are not an option, right? Are not an option. So, our IS curve should shift to the right. And then what happens to the LM curve? Is it shifting? to the left, I mean, is it shifting downwards or upwards? Downwards. It's shifting downwards. Thank you. So the right answer there is four. So this is the same as what we saw in the previous question, right? Um, maybe not that one. OK, not these ones, but the, 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 the idea is, is, is the same. So if the fiscal policy is expansionary, um, it will shift to the right. And if the LM curve is, I mean, if the monetary policy is expansionary, it will shift um, downwards. So the correct answer for 29 is answer number four. And then question 30, in terms of the ISLM model, the macroeconomic stabilization policies the country has followed can be represented graphically as follows. So basically, you are just plotting your option four. Which diagram is correct for option four? So we're looking for a diagram where the IS curve um, shifts to the right and the LM curve shifts downwards. D. So the correct answer is D. Thank you. Okay, so the... That's the last two questions. Question 31, which of the following statements is correct? Um, within the ISLM model, if a contractionary fiscal policy is applied, the higher the interest rate set by the monetary authorities, um, what is the impact on 
income. And I know this, this graph is a bit intimidating. I mean, it hit like four LM curves, but the question is really asking you, um, the higher the interest rates that government sets, what is the relative uh, proportional change in the level of income? So if, if the interest rate is small, what happens to the level of income? If it is a bit higher, is it a bit higher of the level of income or is it less? And this really depends on the slope, right, of the IS curve. So if you check IS1, or at least it doesn't matter, even if you look at IS itself, um, what happens to the LM? Whether LM is at LM1 or LM2 or LM3, the change in Y is really dependent on how much the interest has changed. So the question is asking, the higher the interest. So if you increase interest by a, a large amount, what is the impact on the level of income? What is the answer for that one? Two. The answer is two, right? And and like I said, it's really a function of the slope um, of, of the IS curve. So the last question, which one of the following policy actions um, in the ISLM model is appropriate if the objectives are to simultaneously decrease the budget deficit and increase the level of output and income. So the objective here is to decrease the budget deficit. We did an example here where we decreased the budget deficit, we said we can either increase T or reduce G, right? Um, so if you did that to decrease the budget deficit with the hope that, or with the aim that you also increase the level of output, which is the appropriate um, combination of policies. Number three. Okay. Nadia says number three, let's go through her reasoning. So if you want to reduce the budget deficit, you would um, increase taxes or reduce government spending. Those variables affect the IS curve, um, and those are fiscal policy variables, and those are contractionary, right? Because you're increasing taxes, which means people can't spend as much as they would like to. So a contractionary fiscal policy is correct. Um, so the question now is whether it's two or three. So let's go to the to the, to how she reasoned this one, the following one, which is to say if you want to increase the level of outcome. So the question is on the alternative policy, um, if you wanted to increase the level of outcome, is it an expansionary um, monetary policy? or a contractionary monetary policy. And we, we have discussed that if you want to increase the level of income, then you should be implementing an expansionary monetary policy. So the correct answer is three, as Nadia has said. So that's the end of the revision questions that are specific to policy mix. Um, if you guys have any questions, um, I'm happy for us to to discuss, um, but those questions should be limited to policy mix. So if you maybe in the study guide um, found an example that you want us to look at and kind of uh, think through together, then I'm happy for us to do that. Okay, doesn't sound like um, anyone um, has questions. So are you guys happy with the policy mix and will you be getting it right in the in the assignment? I hope so. I, I also hope so. But just remember the idea is to always ask yourself what is the objective? Which variables will help me um, achieve that objective? Um, and those variables, do they affect um, um, do they affect the goods market and the IS curve or do they affect the financial market and the LM curve? 
and to which direction should it be shifting for it to to achieve the objective if you are able to 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 think about it in that way or through that process then i i don't think you would um you will struggle with the questions that being said thank you very much for being a great audience and i will then adjourn this class and i hope to see you in the discussion forums where you can then ask any questions policy mix or any other learning units that you would like clarity on thank you very much and enjoy the rest of your evening